Conservative MP and Care and Mental Health Minister Gillian Keegan, who joins me now. Um, very buoyant and, and boosterish about getting boosters. Many of the headlines this morning reflect that. Have we got enough and how are they to be prioritised? Good morning, Minister. Good morning. Uh, yes, we've got enough. The um, NHS are working on operationalising the plan right now with the Department for Health. I'm pretty sure they'll be prioritised as they uh, were previously in age cohorts. So obviously we've done the most vulnerable people and the oldest in our population. 17 million boosters have been um, jabbed or administered. Um, but and there are more people who are still eligible so i'm getting mine this week actually but you know they will probably come come at uh, use the same process we've used which is age, age cohorts now the rules for face masks and travel are for three weeks but i understand the self-isolation is in place indefinitely if that is case, the case is there not danger of another pandemic what are we doing to avoid that minister well, obviously, what we're doing is um, waiting on the uh, input from the scientists. So we need to just buy some time so that they can tell us, um, you know, exactly how effective uh, uh, our current vaccines are against uh, the variant. And we just need that more more input from them uh, until we get that. Obviously, uh, we want people to self-isolate. I mean, we, we ask people to self-isolate anyway. You know, if they get um, a positive test, they have to self-isolate. Uh, obviously, now, if you've been in contact with somebody with Omicron, we're asking you to self-isolate just so we can slow the spread to give the scientists enough time to be able to uh, give us more input and more information. You won't be surprised every minister who does the round is asked the same question. How safe is Christmas, Minister? Well, I mean, we're saying, you know, we want to, obviously, the best thing we can do, and uh, what I've said, said before is, you know, we want everybody to come forward and get their jab for Christmas, before Christmas, you know, if you haven't had your first jab, there's about four and a half million people who haven't, come forward, please. If you haven't had your second, come forward. Your booster, when you're called up, come forward. The best thing we can do um, for, for everything, really, to, to protect our society and, and to, you know, make sure that we can go about our daily businesses as, as much as we possibly can, is for everybody to uh, get their jab. It is the best wall of defence. So, yeah, all we want for Christmas is everyone to get their jab. Um, and what about attending a nativity play? Would you recommend that? Well, yes, I think we've said go, go about your plans. I mean, obviously, you know, wear a mask, be cautious, um, you know, th 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 all the other, all the things that people usually put in place, to be honest. I think most people are being, uh, have been sensible all along. But we're not saying to people, cancel uh, your plans. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it'd be lovely to go to a nativity play right now. Um, some of my listeners are a bit confused. If they want to buy an orange juice from a supermarket, they must put on a mask. But if they sit in a pub and waiting for their orange juice to be served, surrounded by strangers, they don't need to wear their mask. Why might that be? Um, because they'll be drinking the orange juice in the pub and they will be taking the orange juice home. Yeah, but while, so they're wait while they're waiting, would it not make sense for they're sitting all that time? No? Well, I mean, you take them on and off in pubs. That's why we've basically not made it um, mandatory in pubs. But a lot of people do go into pubs and, and sit there with their mask on. Mm -hmm. And until they get to their table, they do that. Um, you know, it is um, it is something that, you know, people people take a personal decision. But, you know, I often put my mask on until I sit down there. I take my mask off. Same with going into other other venues. But the, the thing about restaurants and pubs is people are eating and drinking, mm. you know, pretty much all the time. You know, you might have the first bit of weight while it, your food comes but you're eating and drinking all the time so your mask's on and off so that's why uh, we've made the distinction between shops um, where you're going into crowded places with lots of people uh, particularly this time of year um, and uh, we've, we've basically um, made that distinction but we will be reviewed every three weeks and for people who goodness knows they've had a tough year of it and they might have been hoping to get away perhaps for a bit of skiing or whatever it might be this winter again what is the recommendation there? can they still go to Europe skiing would you recommend it would you rather they stayed at home what's the situation well again we've put a number of countries on the red list um, not not ski resorts no. actually um, but uh, there's a number of countries on the red list and they'll be reviewed um, uh, as well every three weeks which they are all the time but you know we, what we've basically said is you know we don't know much about the new variant we're trying to be proportionate we're trying to be balanced uh, we're waiting for more input from the scientists you know we're not recommending people to change their plans but people have always had to be cautious with travel you know we've always said you know uh, we do we, we do have this system where, where we may need to move quickly. Um, but I think people, you know, can still go about booking their plans. But, you know, we, we, we do, rec you know, obviously anyone who's in South Africa right now no, 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 has to make a change to their but, plans. But a skiing trip, say, to France or Austria, that's still on in your view? 
We've said people to continue with their plans. Um, you know, they'll know, and many people will be, and they'll know more, we'll know more in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, we want to be proportionate. We don't want to tell people to stop doing things that they were intending to do. But uh, it's clearly it's difficult because we don't have all the information we would uh, like from the scientists. Uh, so we're buying time. That's why we've put these countries on the red list, buy time, try and slow those spread so that the uh, scientists can can tell us, um, you know, what what uh, how effective the vaccines are and then obviously uh, we'll have a lot more information. Last couple of questions, noting that you are Care and Mental Health Minister. What are the provisions in residential and care homes? What are required there for staff, indeed for visitors? Um, well, they've all um, had the uh, offer of the, the boosters. So many, many people now, we have very high booster uh, uptake amongst the residents and the staff are, are being done as well. And of course, uh, we ask people to uh, wear masks as well, staff, visitors, um, and to take precautions. You know, obviously we've got the most vulnerable people in our society in, in, in their care homes. So we've always been quite cautious. And, and you know, there is a lot of, co lot of yes. uh, infection control uh, procedures that are in place. In there was moments. considerable fear we would lose a high percentage of care staff was that when it became necessary mandatory for them to have their to have their jabs was that did that turn out to be the case minister no, I mean, I haven't had the final figures yet because there's a lag in the data. Um, but what we did see is a lot more people came forward for the vaccine. And um, most of the uh, care, care sector, um, you know, obviously there will be some people who sadly uh, did leave. But um, on the whole, um, it, it, it wasn't a, a huge amount of people, although I don't have the final numbers. Um, but most of the uh, care settings uh, said it was manageable. OK, lastly, you've been busy this morning. You might not be aware, but Ray Lingworth, who's a very big name in cricket he played before you were probably even born he was the England captain he won the ashes sadly he's been diagnosed with throat cancer and he supports assisted dying as he fears he might have a rather uh, grim battle ahead do you um I I've gone back and forth on this actually because I'm um, I mean I, I now have the responsibility for that but it is a conscience issue it's not something that the government sort of sets sets a path on as it were mm. but I have a lot of um, constituents in the same um, situation as Ray or or just um, you know very elderly who mm. do support assisted dying um, I've I've previously been very um, cautious about it as assisted dying I'm a Catholic and you know you always think where, you mm -hmm. know, where there's a will there's a relative etc but um, I think there's a lot of people now who who you know with the right sort of procedures in place um, are putting forward a case it will be debated again I'm sure um, but it is a tricky issue because you know it, you just worry about what um, you know what 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 will happen and what will happen within families as well um, but I'm I guess I'm open-minded I sense you are possibly for turning way. lastly minister you can see the argument for it then I can, I can, and I've listened to a lot of constituents who have very strong cases. Um, and I had a, a very good friend who had motor neuron uh, disease, and that was uh, something that struck me as well. And he had a, a very awful time at the end. So, yes, I can, I can see, um, I can see both sides actually of the case. But uh, it will be debated, and it'll be something that I'll be very, very carefully paying attention to. Grateful for your time. Thank you, Gillian Keegan, who's the Care and Mental Health Minister, appearing here on LBC. Two minutes after.